Hi, so I'm going to tell you about the new DPS here. Now, on the left, you can see the toolbar and groups of instruments, control tools and complex tools. Those come with a plus sign. Also, there are independent and aerial tools over here. Now, first, I want to tell you about complex tools because it's probably the most interesting thing about the new DPS. So these can combine several areas, creating a single entity. Let me show you what I'm talking about with Glade. So Glade is something like Puddle from the previous version, but it's better. So when you activate any of the complex tools, it creates a new entity and automatically switches to Aerial tool. So let's draw a couple of areas. Together, those areas form a Glade entity. Now we can drag each area, or we can move an entire entity at once. Now, entities have properties. Like here, you can see it's got opacity and blur parameters. It's very convenient that now you can adjust properties of an entire entity, or you can configure each area separately. Those properties are highlighted and gold color. Now, you can edit control points of your areas. You can convert them to polygons and you can make them separate entities. Now let's talk about the Plenty tool. Plenty puts objects into areas. So let's go ahead and put some trees in our area. So I'll draw a rectangle and an ellipse and I'll uncheck the additive box so that I can subtract from the rectangle with my ellipse, leaving certain areas unfilled. You can adjust the inner space parameter and you can also change random seed. It's pretty much the same with rooms. We specify the type and create an interior outlined with walls. So let's create a few areas. I'm going to create one of the areas just like I did with Glade. And this way I get a separate room, see? And it's going to be right above the previous area. Now by default, rooms have ceilings. And if I uncheck this box, the ceiling disappears. And now there's just walls. Now you can put portals on walls and you can set the width and you can close them if you want to. And the good news is that DPS generates loss files for virtual tabletops. Also, the new version has a couple of new tools. One is for drawing roofs and another one for the stairs. When you put one room over another, you create a second floor. So let's create a room on a second floor. Now notice how the shadow got bigger. Now let's add a couple of objects. You can probably notice that there are hotkeys mentioned by the sliders. Those are shortcuts. Like this one, for example, tells us that a mouse wheel in combination with control lets us rotate things. If you press shift, you get a vertical sort of movement and you can change the size by pressing control shift. Also, you can pick several objects and edit them simultaneously. I think you notice the shadows, and in here you can change the light angle, its direction, or you can even switch it off. Also, we have a few global light presets here, and you can create light sources and adjust their parameters.
both objects and light sources stick to areas where they were put on. So it's very convenient that you don't have to control that manually. When you move a certain area, you move all the elements together. All actions are logged in the history panel and you can get like a hundred steps back or forward if you want to. When you export, you can choose VTT for which you want to generate a loss map. Now currently it only works with fantasy grounds. Like on my computer, a map of this size gets exported in less than a second, no matter how much entities it's got. Now a bigger map would take more time to render, but generally less than 10 seconds. Alright, that's all for now, wish you guys well, and happy map making!